Hello and welcome to Incubator Warehouse. Today we're going to help you plan and build your own egg incubator. With your ambition and our products and knowledge, we're confident that you can build your own custom incubator. Let's get started with the planning process. Phase 1. Planning your incubator build. The first thing to determine is what size of incubator you'll need. Start by figuring out what kind of eggs and how many you want to incubate. You'll be able to fit more quail eggs in a space than the number of ostrich eggs you could fit in the same space. If you're planning to incubate several different types of eggs at different times in the incubator, make sure that you plan your build around the largest egg you intend to hatch. This video will help you plan your incubator using the IncuKit series from Incubator Warehouse. Each IncuKit has a thermostat, fan, and heating element. The IncuKits have been designed to take a lot of guesswork out of building your own incubator. They are easy to use and install, and IncuKits have been designed for bird, reptile, and bee incubators only. To help you plan your build, we'll categorize incubators into two groups, tabletop incubators and cabinet incubators. Tabletop incubators hold up to 40 chicken eggs typically in one layer on the floor of the incubator. Cabinet incubators usually hold 40 to a few hundred chicken eggs on multiple shelves or levels. When building the tabletop incubator, you will use the IncuKit Mini. For anything larger, you're going to want to use the IncuKit XL. The table outlines the main features and differences between the IncuKit XL and IncuKit Mini. In addition, it outlines the two great thermostat choices for the IncuKit XL, the IncuStat Basic and IncuStat Advanced. Feel free to pause the video to study this table for as long as you need while planning your build. Incubator Size Now that you know the type of incubator you want to build and which IncuKit you need, let's plan the size and materials for your incubator. In working with customers over the years, we have found that some customers want to build their own incubator case and others want to use a pre-made case. Our experiences show that you can make a larger incubator with a factory insulated pre-made case like a fridge, freezer, wine cooler, or even a small camping cooler. You don't have to use a pre-made case, but if you use your own materials, they generally don't hold heat as well, so you'll need to build a smaller unit to maintain your desired temperature. Based on our years of experience, we have set some parameters to help guide you in planning the size and materials for your incubator. These parameters are outlined in this table. Please keep in mind these are just suggestions based on our experience and your results may vary. For example, if your pre-made case has failing insulation, door seals, or other parts, it will not remain as stable as one without those issues. You may have similar issues if your homemade case is not sealed or insulated properly. Once again, feel free to pause here as long as you need in order to determine what will work best for you. If you're building your own case, we recommend using insulated, water-resistant materials like foamed plastic. For cabinet builds, we do not recommend cardboard, glass, plexiglass, or any other thin or uninsulated material. If you choose a thin or uninsulated material for your tabletop incubator, then your case will need to be smaller to allow for the extra heat loss. We would also like to offer a few caveats about using wood in your DIY incubator. Many successful incubators have been made with wood, however, wood is a poor insulator on its own. Using wood alone will limit the size of incubator you can build. It will also absorb moisture, which makes it more difficult to maintain humidity. The retention of moisture in the wood could also potentially affect the longevity of your incubator. To avoid these pitfalls, one suggestion is to coat the inside of the incubator with a non-toxic waterproof coating, thin plastic sheeting, or layer of foam to prevent the wood from absorbing moisture. If you decide to use a layer of plastic sheeting or foam, permanently adhere it to the wall using a non-toxic, low VOC adhesive to prevent water buildup between the layers. Incubator Location Even though the IncuKit is equipped with a reliable and accurate thermostat, temperature changes in the environment around your incubator will inevitably have some effect on the temperature inside. It is critical that incubators be in the location that is constantly between 65 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit for birds and between roughly 60 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit for reptiles. Your incubator also should not be near any heating or cooling sources, and there should never be any direct sunlight on your incubator. Garages, barns, shops, and outbuildings that are not temperature controlled are not suitable places for your incubator. Please note that incubators are only designed to heat, not cool. If your room temperature ever gets close to your set point, the incubator will likely overheat. This is because the fan, thermostat, and turner motor generate a small amount of heat even when the heater is turned off. This is especially critical when building a reptile incubator because the set point is so much closer to a normal room temperature. We offer a special wiring connector for reptile builds that will turn the fan off when the heater turns off to help reduce the amount of heat generated once the set point is reached. Now you should have all the information you need to plan the dimensions of your incubator. It's time to talk about where to put all the components during assembly. Phase 2. Building your incubator. 
Location of vents. Because eggs are alive and require fresh air, every incubator needs to have adequate ventilation. It's best to have at least two vents in opposite corners of the incubator. For example, you could have one in the front near the bottom and one in the back side near the top. We sell butterfly vent covers that can easily be opened and closed to allow more or less airflow as needed. We recommend these types of vent covers because they are easily adjustable and will not get lost. Humidity management. You'll also need a way to manage humidity inside your incubator. This can be as simple as a reservoir of some kind in the bottom of your incubator. However, this method does take up valuable space. When using this method, you increase humidity percentage by increasing the surface area of the water in the incubator. The depth of the water will only affect how long this humidity level is maintained. Depth will not increase the humidity percentage. Having several different reservoirs with different surface areas will provide the greatest flexibility in maintaining appropriate humidity levels. For accurate and precise humidity management, we recommend using the Humidikit in your incubator. The Humidikit allows you to digitally set your desired percentage and maintains it for you automatically. This greatly reduces the time and guessing you otherwise have to spend to get your humidity where you want it. All you need to do is refill the bottle as necessary. Egg Turner and Hatching If you're incubating bird eggs, then you will need to turn your eggs at least two to three times a day. Most people use a manufactured automatic egg turner like the Inky Turner Hovabater Yellow Egg Turner. We have several options available on our website. In a cabinet size incubator, you can place one on each shelf of your incubator. However, sometimes the shapes and sizes available won't meet your needs. Because every build is different, we cannot provide egg turners that work for everyone. We do, however, offer several motors that can help you get your eggs moving, but the design and fabrication of the egg turner is ultimately up to you. Our motors are outlined in the following table. This should give you a fair idea of which motor will meet your needs best. We recommend pausing this video as you work out what kind of turner will work best for you. In order to help you get started in designing your egg turner, we'll show you some pictures of several common types of egg turners. Cabinet rack style turner, most commonly seen in the Sportsman series from GQF. Rocking style turner. Rolling turner. Hot dog style. Rotisserie style. As you look through these different styles of egg turners, you will need to consider where your eggs will hatch. In order to have a healthy hatch, the eggs will need to be laid on their sides on a stable, flat surface. If there are holes in the surface, it's important that they are small enough that the animal you're hatching will not have any problems walking or slithering away from the shell once they have fully hatched. Sometimes people will hatch their eggs out on the shelves that the egg turners sit on. If you choose this method, you will likely need to remove parts or all of your egg turner so that the eggs can be properly situated for a healthy hatch. Otherwise, you can look into having hatching trays in your incubator or having a completely separate unit specifically for hatching. If you choose this method, just keep in mind that the hatching trays can really alter the airflow inside your incubator or hatcher. Fan heater placement. Before attaching your fan heater units, it's important to know how they work so that you can optimize their position. Our fan heater units work by pulling cooler air in through the top of the fan. The top is the side with the chrome fan guard. The fan then forces the cooler air around the heat plate, warming it. This airflow pattern helps keep a consistent temperature in the incubator and prevents the air from blowing directly onto the eggs, which keeps the eggs closest to the fan from drying out. Because every incubator is different, you'll need to choose carefully where to place your fan heater units. If your incubator is short and wide, then you'll generally want to place the fan heater units on the top of your incubator. If your incubator is tall and skinny, then it's better to place your fan heater units on the back or sides. With this style, you could also choose to put one on the top and one on the side or back of the incubator. We recommend testing the locations of your fan heater units to find out what is best for your unique incubator before you finalize the wiring. Please note that any vent, shelves, and turning mechanisms will significantly affect airflow and heat distribution. We recommend making your shelves out of welded wire or some kind of perforated material. If you must use a solid shelf, then leave at least a half inch gap on all sides of the shelf for airflow and support the shelf with cross beams. Temperature sensor placement. The final factor in achieving a consistent temperature in your incubator is the placement of your temperature probe. We recommend putting it in the center of your eggs, away from the output of the heater units. The temperature probe has a wire that is about 24 inches long, so make sure to choose a place for the thermostat that allows you to mount your temperature probe where you want it. Phase 3. Test your incubator before adding eggs. Congratulations, you finished building your incubator. But hold on, don't put eggs in it quite yet. It's important to ensure that everything in your build is working properly before adding any eggs. 
To do this, just run your incubator for at least 48 hours and check for problems. Some common issues or adjustments include fan heat replacement, humidity reservoir size, impeded airflow, and insulation. In our next video in the series, we'll be covering some troubleshooting and fine-tuning tips for DIY incubators with the InkyKit XL. Make sure to check it out. As a final note, while our products may work for other applications, we do not support or warranty them for these purposes. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.